We're going to take a look at how we propagate uncertainties. That is, when we make calculations based on our raw measurements, what happens to the uncertainties in those calculated quantities? So up to this point, you know how to make measurements and estimate the uncertainties in those measurements. But often in labs, what we want to do is make calculations. So we want to calculate a speed from a measured distance and time. And we, of course, like to know, well, how big is the uncertainty going to be in the speed? And that basic process is called propagating uncertainties. Now, up to this time, you've been writing your measurements and uncertainties in what's called absolute form, which means that you've got a value and an uncertainty that both have the same units. So 6.6 .6 seconds plus or minus 0.2 seconds. We only have to write the seconds down once. But often what we'd like to do is rate our uncertainties as a fraction. So in fractional form, this uncertainty would be 6.6 .6 plus or minus 0.2 out of 6.6. .6. So you're just looking at how big is your uncertainty compared to your value. Now, when you rate it as a fractional uncertainty, you've really got seconds divided by seconds. So there's no units in that fraction. The only units are in the value. So make sure that you put the units in with the value. Otherwise, your reader isn't going to be able to tell whether you're writing in absolute form or you're writing in fractional form. And we usually wouldn't just leave it as a fraction. We'd write that as 6.6 .6 seconds plus or minus 0.03. Now, we tend to be a little bit more familiar for some reason in writing things in terms of percent instead of fractions. So rather than writing 0 0.03, we write 3%. If we wanted to write our values in percent form, we'd write 6.6 .6 plus or minus 0.2 out of 6.6 .6 times 100%. So if we want to go to percent form, we're going to have to do lots of multiplying and dividing by 100. It's a little bit more work, but if you're more comfortable using percentages, then by all means use percentages. So we'd end up writing that as 6.6 .6 plus or minus 3%. And once again, don't forget to put the units in with the value. And notice here, there's two ways of being more precise with our measurements. One way is, of course, to just lower the uncertainty. Get some better measuring equipment, maybe a photo gate timer, and bring down your uncertainty. But the other way to improve your precision is to increase the value itself. If we increase the value itself, then our fractional uncertainty here is going to get smaller. So for instance, if you've got a pendulum and you time it to go back and forth once, and let's say your time comes out to be one second, and let's suppose your uncertainty was 0.1 seconds, then as a fraction, that would be a 10% uncertainty. However, we're going to improve our measurements if we, instead of just letting the pendulum go back and forth once, let's say we let it go back and forth 10 times. So then our total time should be about 10 seconds. Our uncertainty should be the same, 0.1 seconds, and that would mean we've reduced our fractional uncertainty or our percent uncertainty from 10% down to 1% just by increasing the value being measured. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to give you five different rules for propagating uncertainties. So if you get really good at this, this is going to enable you to propagate uncertainties for any type of calculation. I'm just going to give you one example of each rule. I'm not going to explain why they work. I'm going to let you grapple with that on your own. So let's look at our first rule. It applies whenever we're multiplying by a constant. And the rule is very simple. It says keep the same percentage uncertainty. So let's say we want to calculate a circumference. Circumference would be equal to 2 pi, a constant, times r, our measured value. So let's make up something for r. Let's say r is equal to 10 plus or minus 1 centimeter. That is, r is equal to 10 plus or minus 1 over 10, 10%. So it's a 10% uncertainty in r. So that means we're also going to have a 10% uncertainty in the circumference. So our circumference would be equal to, well, 2 pi is 6.28 times 10 would be 62.8. The units would be centimeters and then plus or minus keep the same percent uncertainty or the same fractional uncertainty so it'd still be 10 percent. And then if we wanted to express that as an absolute uncertainty we'd take 10 percent of 62.8. So we'd get 62.8 plus or minus 
about 6.3 centimeters. Now notice here, we said the rule was keeping the same percent uncertainty, but we could express that rule another way. We could say multiply both value and uncertainty by the constant. So if circumference is equal to 2 pi and r is equal to 10 plus or minus 1 centimeter, then we'd have 2 pi times 10 plus or minus 2 pi times 1. So 10 times 2 pi would give you back that 62.8 plus or minus 2 pi, which would be the 6.3, and that would be in centimeters. And notice here, when you do a unit conversion, you're really just multiplying by a constant. So for instance, if I write 1 plus or minus 0 0.01 meters, then if I want to convert by to centimeters, I need to multiply by 100. So I'd multiply both the number and the value by 100. 100 plus or minus 1 centimeters is equivalent to 1 plus or minus 0 0.01 meters. Our second rule applies when you're adding or subtracting. And the rule is simply to add the absolute uncertainties. So let's suppose our values are x equals 31 plus or minus 1 centimeter and y equals 20 plus or minus 1 centimeter. And we wanted to calculate, say, x minus y. Okay, so the value part is simply going to be 31 minus 20. And then the uncertainty part, we're going to add those two absolute uncertainties. So it's going to be 1 plus 1 centimeter. So we're going to get a final answer of 11 plus or minus 2 centimeters. Notice here when you're subtracting quantities that the uncertainty can become quite large compared to the value. So for instance, what if this value had been 21? Then we would have got 1 plus or minus 2 centimeters. So if you're subtracting quantities, your uncertainty can become quite large. Our third rule applies when you're multiplying or dividing quantities. And the rule is simply that you add the percent or the fractional uncertainties. So a very common division operation in physics is to calculate the speed as being the distance divided by the time. So let's suppose our distance is given by 31.2 plus or minus 0 0.3 meters and our time is given by 3.0 seconds plus or minus 5 percent. Now the time is already given as a percent uncertainty so that's great because our rule is to add percent uncertainties. Let's convert our distance into percent uncertainties. So that's going to be 31.2 meters plus or minus 0.3 divided by 31.2 times a hundred percent. And if you work that out, you get 31.2 meters plus or minus about one percent. So now what I need to do is add these two percent uncertainties. My uncertainty in the speed is going to be one percent plus five percent for six percent. So my speed is going to be 31.2 divided by 3.0, that's meters per second, plus or minus 5% plus 1%. Work that out, you'll get 10.4 plus or minus 6%. And we don't usually leave our result in percentage uncertainties. We usually convert back to absolute uncertainties. So 6% of 10.4 is about 0 0.6. So we'd get 10.4. That's meters per second. And this is an absolute uncertainty. So I write the meters per second at the end. Whereas here, I really should have the meters per second after the value. And we double check, we've got one significant digit on our uncertainty, and it's in the tenths decimal place, which is the same as our final digit here. And then, so that would be our final answer for the speed. My next rule applies when you've got a quantity raised to a power. And the rule is simply to multiply the percentage uncertainty by the power. So this equation here, it tells us the amount of time it takes for an object to fall straight down a distance d. So let's suppose d is equal to 32 plus or minus 
2 meters. And converting that to percentage form, that'll be 32 meters, plus or minus 6%. Now I'm going to write my equation where I'm going to bring a constant out front, and then times d to the 1 half. So a square root is a power to the 1 half. So this really is something raised to a power. And notice this out front, that's just multiplying by a constant. So that's not really going to affect anything here, because when we multiply by a constant, we keep the same percentage uncertainty. And so that's going to be determined by d itself here. So what we need to do is t is going to equal, the value is going to be d over 4.9, or 32 divided by 4.9, plus or minus a half, that's the power, so that's the power, times the percentage uncertainty in D, and that'll be 6%. And if you work that out, you get 2.56 seconds, plus or minus 3%. And then 3% of 2.56 is about 0 0.08. Our uncertainty is in the second decimal place, so our value here should be in the second decimal place as well. I don't need to write seconds here and here, I can just write it once. So my final answer there would be 2.56 plus or minus 0 0.08 seconds. Now I have one other method to teach you. It works in all circumstances. So I have a lot of students ask me, well, why do you even teach us the other methods? Because we could always use this one. Well, the other methods are a little bit faster in most circumstances. But if you really like this method, go ahead and use it in all circumstances. But I will warn you, that in some circumstances it will get a little more complicated than maybe you're expecting. But a typical good use of this method is with something like a sine function. So suppose we wanted to find out the uncertainty in the sine of theta. And let's suppose that theta was equal to 20 plus or minus 2 degrees. First thing we've got to recognize is what the sine function looks like. Oh, it looks something like that, but at 20 degrees the function is increasing. That's important because what we're going to have to do is calculate the maximum and minimum values of our function sine theta between, well, 18 and 22 degrees. We need to know that the sine of 22 is bigger than the sine of 18. And our maximum value is going to be the sine of 20 plus 2 degrees or the sine of 22 degrees, work that out and you'll get 0 0.3746. Then work out the minimum value on that interval. And it's got to occur at 18 degrees when you subtract off 2 degrees. Do the math and you'll get 0 0.3090. So your uncertainty is going to equal max minus min divided by 2 which is simply 0.3746 minus 0 0.3090 all divided by 2 and that comes out to be 0 0.03 to one significant digit. So that means that the sine of 20 plus or minus 2 degrees is going to be equal to, well the sine of 20 is simply 0 0.3420 plus or minus 0 0.03. This is in the second decimal place, so I'll round this off to the second decimal place, so you're going to get 0 0.39 plus or minus 0 0.03. Notice here that if we had had a cosine function, the cosine function would be decreasing at 20 degrees, and therefore your maximum would occur at 18 degrees, and your minimum would occur at 22 degrees. I now have a few very typical IB questions on propagating uncertainties. Pause the video, read the question over, try it for yourself, and then come back for the answer. So if this is being read on a digital ammeter, then that means it's really 0 0.10 plus or minus 0 0.01 amperes. That is, you put a 1 in the smallest digit as your uncertainty on a digital meter. Now, if we're squaring, we want to take 2 times the percent uncertainty. Our percent uncertainty here is 10%. So that means 2 times 
would be 20%. And the correct answer is D. Here's a second question. Pause the video, read it over, try it out for yourself, come back for the answer. Hopefully you said 12%. The reason being that the speed has to equal the acceleration times time. So we're multiplying, we need to add the percentage uncertainties, so it's going to be 8% for the acceleration plus another 4% for the time to give a grand total of 12%. And one more IB multiple choice question. Pause the video, read it over, try it out for yourself, come back for the answer. Hopefully you said the answer is B. So what's happening here, you subtract the two values, you get a very small value. 51 minus 49 is only 2. But you've got to add uncertainties. 1 plus 1 is going to give you 2. So in this case, your uncertainty is just as big as your value. And it's much, much bigger than any of the other three cases. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.